Joined here by professor of psychology at Yale University, Laurie Santos. I don't know if we're related, but I got to tell you, <laughs> you are the most popular lady in town. We're here at the Whaley Museum, so you can speak on the topic of happiness. And there are people all the way down the street. I guess everybody wants to be happy. Yeah, I mean, we did some like press work for trying to drum up excitement, but I guess we didn't need to do that. I guess happiness is a topic that everybody's interested in. To say there was a long line outside of the Whaling Museum, we are not exaggerating. Out the door, around the corner, and all the way up Johnny Cake Hill. There are so many people here at the Whaling Museum that they had to set up extra chairs and do a live stream so Laurie Santos could deal with her topic of happiness. I know you were valedictorian at New Bedford High School. You also went to Harvard, now a professor at Yale. How did that happen? Did you always want to teach? Um, I think I always wanted to like do research and learn. I was always interested in human psychology. I think this was just a natural extension of it. How did it come that you were going to teach a course on the psychology of happiness? Yeah, so it actually came out by working with students. So I'm, I'm both a professor and I'm what's one of Yale's heads of colleges, which means I live in the college with students. And it was through that that I saw that students just aren't as happy as we think. You know, we think college students are out partying all the time, but they're like much more depressed and unhappy than we think. And so I just wanted to do something to help them. I just wanted to give them some content that they could like learn something practical to feel less stressed and to increase their well-being. Is a lot of it mental? I mean, you have to kind of focus on, hey, you know what? I got to be positive. I got to be, you know, in that mindset. Yeah, I mean, that's the real secret. I think we think for happiness, we have to change something. We have to you know, get a different job or buy a new house or something. But really, it's about appreciating the things we have, kind of interacting differently with the stuff we have right now. Turns out our life circumstances, like what job we have, our, our house and stuff, doesn't matter as much as we think. How do you deal with things like illness, chronic pain, those kind of things that can be a big obstacle? Yeah, I think that's another spot where I think our, our minds are kind of giving us, we think like, oh my gosh, if I got sick, like that would be it. But sometimes people for whom they have chronic illness, like that's the thing that gives them meaning. They say like, that's caused me to realize everything that's important to me in life. And so I think we think like, you know, the good stuff, like winning the lottery, a huge salary, that's going to make us happy. And the bad stuff, you know, sickness and so on, it's going to make us unhappy. And it does a little bit, but not as much as we think. It makes us prioritize the wrong stuff. How about human relationships? That's important, right? Yeah, in fact, that's the one thing that if you look at what very happy people do, very happy people spend a lot of time with the people they care about. They prioritize that. It's like the thing that consistently distinguishes really happy people from not so happy people. Right. You're popular at Yale with this course. How come? You think that people are really interested in this topic? I think it's just like struck a chord. I mean, I think a lot of us are just like more overwhelmed, like more depressed than we think. And people are looking for answers. I think they're looking to the science to provide some of those answers. People started pouring into the Whaling Museum about 45 minutes before the presentation. And you knew that this place was going to be overloaded. All right, what is your name? Jeannie. And you? Rita. Big crowd here tonight. What do you think the reason for that is? Why did you come here? Everybody wants to be happy. What do you think the secret is? I know we haven't heard anything yet. This is what we wanted to hear. <laughs> That's why we came. I want to know what the secret is. Well, we got a few ideas, but uh, it's always good to hear more. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> yes. You also. Vanessa. Vicky. Okay, why are you here tonight? I think it's important. Yeah, um, everybody wants to be happy. A lot of people are looking for happiness. A lot of us are missing like the key to it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point of it, I think. So I think a lot of us are just looking for a little bit of inspiration. You look like you're happy already. <laughs> I try. <laughs> so do you think this will make you even happier? Well, I'm always up for expanding, you know. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. You seem like an upbeat person, so maybe you're working, uh, you know, this whole approach is working for you, too. Well, I think that's the thing is that, you know, a lot of happiness is doing certain practices. And now that I'm teaching about it, I have to kind of practice what I preach or else you kind of look bad. And so I think it really has improved my happiness. In fact, when I measure my happiness using these happiness scales, I've gone up by a whole point, which is a lot. So I'm happy. Keep up the great work over here. It's Thanks a great so topic, and obviously you're very popular. There's a line going down the street, so uh, yeah. knock them dead today. Thanks so much. And I'll give one plug, which is that if you missed the lecture, um, you can see a short version of the Yale class on Coursera.org. It's called The Science of Wellbeing. You can sign up for free and get everything that the Yale students get without having to pay any tuition money. So a good way to check out the class. Thanks very much, Laurie. Thanks so much. Good All right. See you.